margin. Um, at the beginning, first few sentences about me. So thank Pavel for introducing me and thank Uplifting for having me here. What I am, I'm basically a data consultant mainly. So I work in, in data a lot, a lot of years and uh, I had the pleasure to be at the um, many big or small projects all across across the Europe, mainly in telco and in banking sector. And uh, so mainly from this area, my, my experience from project is, and uh, here I would like to share with you some experiences I, I had during, during all these years. And the topic today is tech debt. However, my, maybe my solution will not be that technical, but definitely uh, it will have impact to, to tech areas. So I believe many of you already seen some situations like this. And actually all of these are quotes that I already experienced from, from the projects. And the most lovable one from my side is, is the first one. So a lot of people are telling that they have invested so many effort and so much money um, in the solution. So they can't just stop it now. And you know, it's, it's, uh, it's usually not that technical discussion. They know that their solution is, is old and wrong and uh, they are investing so much effort just to keeping it running. But from a political perspective, they just can't, uh, can't afford to close the solution and kill it because they have built usually a career on, on those solutions and they will just destroy their child and they don't want it. So they are keeping it because of they want their career. Uh, and another situation is maybe a little bit similar, but from the other end of the project. And you know the programmer saying, just don't touch it, it's working. Yeah, it's working now. And uh, he invested a lot of effort just to make it work. And now any other additional change request can just kill the whole thing and he don't want it. And another solution or another situation is, sorry, we don't have a time for this. And again, they are just investing a lot of effort to keeping running, keep running the solution. And here it's a lot of about perception. So they don't want to invest this time to, to new solution because otherwise they wouldn't deliver something they are delivering, delivering right now. So what to do with this? Or how this situation actually is being created? Because I will connect to, to these answers very soon. First, here I have here some, some list of, of reasons why something like that can happen. But from all of these, I, I believe you know that uh, a lot of tech debt is becoming from just, you know, aging of the staff or some changes and new features or the complexity itself. However, from my perspective, I believe that the main tech debt drivers are actually poor decisions and strategy at the first place. And then it's followed by the freedom of personality of, of the developer or tech guy who's actually doing the stuff. You know, if, if there is someone messy, he will not deliver the solution without any depth. And if your strategy is, is focused on delivering uh, some stuff very fast and you are not looking around how, it to, how you can deliver it in a better way, it will always have some depth as well. And pure decisions, yeah, sometimes it's, you know, people who are making the stuff are not skilled enough. It can happen, or basically you will choose the wrong technology in long term, and another technology will win, and your goal just became very old. So this can impact uh, a lot the, uh, the tech debt itself. Uh, so, 
But my uh, advice is sometimes is to actually go for that depth. Uh, because I, I've read a very nice comparison where they are uh, com comparing the technical debt to the actual financial debt. And you know, if you are borrowing some money from a bank, it's usually allowing you to do some investments or to grow faster, to be, to be faster. And I believe uh, this to be like the main driver and main decision point for making a debt. Because if you are going faster, your call will not be the depth free. There will be of always some workarounds and, and so on. And you just need to think about this, that when you are sacrificing some quality of the call or making some of that, you should get something in, in, uh, on the opposite side as a reward. So it, it's really like quid for, quid for quo. You are going faster, but it will cost you in future. On the other hand, if you will invest it, and now it will definitely slow down the project, right? So you will not be delivering the, the, the fastest stuff in here. And another good comparison is if you will compare it, like, you know, to the proportions of, of, of the depth, uh, the longer you are having the depth, the more you will pay just on maintaining it. So the longer you are maintaining the depth, you will just be investing more and more effort in your uh, in your uh, change requests just to make them happen. And the more you will increase the debt and the more you will in invest into the old solution, you know someday you will definitely need to replace, the more it will gonna cost you cost you when you will replace it. So do the debt but be careful about how much you will pay and make sure that it will get something in reward for you. And now I will talk about like uh, one of the biggest drivers at the beginning for the depth, almost on any project. And this would go even for even for uh, startups and as well for bigger companies. Because usually the, the biggest project, whether it's uh, like new CRM system implementation or new, um, uh, new data warehouse or data lake or, or data mesh or whatever it will be, at the beginning, they usually need some proof of concept or pilot or however, however we call it. But usually it's a management decision how fast they want to proceed. And as you know, with the PLCs, usually uh, you want it fast, right? And this is exactly the moment when you will make this decision that it will cost you something later. And I saw so many projects when they started as a small POC and just ran against many company policies, because they are POC, they, they, they will not be in production, they will not handle the production data, uh, they don't need the um, approved architecture, they don't need access to all the systems, because they just want to prove something and test something, and it will be really small, you know. And the fun fact is, when this POC is successful, and you want to be successful, right? Usually there is a big pressure to just make, make, it to pro, make it to production. Like start using it right now. And uh, I saw a lot of, of situations when not just client, but even vendor fails at, at, this, uh, at uh, this setup because uh, vendor knew that he is going fast and the project, pro, project or pro, um, product is not production ready or has not the level of support or he, he actually is not willing to support this solution because he know it will it has been built very fast and, and not durable but at the same time uh, the management at the client usually thinks about the POC or investment actually in the POC they want something tangible at the out of it at the end 
not just the decision. Okay, we, we, we proved that the concept is working, but now we have a working solution, right? So let's use it. And it's usually not, not that easy. And at this moment, a lot of technical debt is, is happening and being approved or somehow uh, becoming a nightmare just a week after the, the solution uh, made it to production. And this needs to be very clear. And usually uh, here I would highlight that at the beginning of the POC at the project, uh, the speed is not usually a technical decision. It's usually a management decision how fast they are and they need the, the, the results. And tech people here should really highlight the risks and keep in mind or remind the managers that at the end of the POC, they need to rework a lot of stuff or build it again, like almost from, from, from nothing again. That's usually the best solution. Not just to use something that has been siloed and uh, build, build aside all of these standards or work and workarounds uh, and uh, just build it again. That's usually the, the best way how to, how to defeat the depth at the beginning of the project. Otherwise, you are taking a lot of burden with you. So, uh, what to keep in mind when, when you are doing this kind of a POC or starting a new project, basically. Uh, aside the things I, I mentioned uh, earlier already, uh, I would really highlight the, the second point that the prepare at the end of the POC, what will happen if it will be successful. Um, my advice is don't allow it to go to production like straight away, just rebuild at, at least the, the main stuff where, where you have the most technological depth and definitely keep lists of the things you've skipped because you are POC. You don't need this and that approval and go to this and that committee. And um, now from the technical perspective, uh, I, would, uh, I would approach this architectural stuff a lot from uh, with the advices that keep the interface really thin. Don't, don't make the interfaces to go through your whole project because that's usually the, the area which will face um, the most requirements from, the, from, from all the standards and all, all the integration stuff. So make the interfaces really thin and really replaceable and reworkable because this will save you, save you time when you will uh, migrate this project or, or move it somewhere else because here it, you, it is usually the, one of the most painful points where you need to just, you know, you are doing something on MySQL and now you need to migrate it to Oracle or whatever. And if you would use the, the Oracle structures or along, this will kill your, this can kill your project almost. And also keep in mind that there can be some areas with that and some areas almost with none. And here it's here, I would say this is technical technical decision. What will be the areas? Because somewhere, you know, you can have a lot of stuff uh, and it can be a sandbox, which you will throw away at the end. Maybe that you are building some kind of a swamp or, or you know, now at the beginning it's a data lake, but uh, can become to a swarm, but you can you can throw it throw it away. But if you will have a, a working orchestrator with, with all these jobs, this is something that you can you can uh, bring to future projects. And uh, last but not least, differentiate between the POC and the MVP, because MVP is something that can eventually go to production and it's and it's expected to be in production and to have real clients. At POC, usually not. And here, I would really highlight at, 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 the, P, at the POC, usually don't, you don't need that much support or security or, secret or, or approvals. At MVP, you should have them. So 
how to deal with it, how to actually deal with the depth uh, when you are on that project. Uh, I've prepared here like three of my areas. I will go through them really quickly because my main point was really to, to go about, to think about it as an investment. But let's, let's, uh, let's see what we can expect in here. So here, and uh, I, I try to be here really simplistic as possible. Uh, I believe that when you are building whatever it is, uh, I believe in modularity in some layers and modules. And the first approach I use at many projects is really to have to have the layers that are communicating with each other and they are not going through all the layers. Uh, you know, there is not one piece of code that is doing everything. That's the main thing in here. And you can really separate the layers and eventually rebuild every single layer as, as you want. And yeah, the, 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 second, the second roof of myself are the modules. So really think about anything. And actually this is happening, for example, in, in data world, uh, what the, I don't care if we will call it ETL or ELT or whatever acronym, but what's happening is that uh, in old days you had the, the ETL boxes really tied to each other and a lot of times duplicated along all the pipelines or, or along all the jobs. What is happening now is that this is being like separated to separated modules that can be completely uh, replaceable. And as of now, usually they are not even in the same technology or at the same product at all. So you can replace any of these, any of these boxes with minimal to no, none uh, impact to the others. And that's the big difference uh, from, the, uh, from the old approaches. And I believe this can be derived to uh, other developments as well. Even the old uh, web development had the uh, very tight connections between, you know, uh, the visual stuff, the data stuff, and how the stuff is behaving, and now it's being completely separated. And I believe that that's the best way how you can keep maintaining the depth in uh, consumable chunks. And as a, as a, as a rules, when you are dealing with the depth, uh, if you want to implement some processes to the, to the company or to the behavior itself, or having some hard stuff that you can follow, I believe that the first thing should be the ownership of the, of the debt. There should be an owner who, who made the decision why we are going faster and why we are having this debt. And eventually after that, to follow some processes, how we can clean it. And for every each of one, there are some habits. And I believe this can be like really a pain point for a lot of people because they are not used to rewrite the stuff or throw something away. And just the, just the, just the thing to being prepared to do that is, is a big deal. Just I, I, I've learned it uh, through many years, actually. I have also been the guy that, oh, I have this piece of code and it's, it's precious stuff. Mm, I experienced that it's, it's not. When, when I invested an hour or two and rewrite it completely, I was much more satisfied with the, with the solution than before. Just I needed to be okay to throw it away and write it again. And main principle, again, keep it simple and understandable. That's, that's the bigger, for me, the biggest drive in the code, how you can, how you can maintain the depth manageable.